At the age of just six years old, Mikey Pooley's parents took him for a routine eye test. A year later, he was completely blind. Thought his dreams of becoming a professional footballer were over. But this young man refused to give up. He continued to play football, and a year after losing his sight, the eight-year-old is now training with England. Quite remarkable. And we're joined now by Mikey and his dad, good John. Good morning. Mikey, good morning to you. I love your shirt. Morning. You're a gooner like me, right? Yeah. So, look, let's go through what happened to you. So, you were a keen footballer. Yeah. You liked Arsenal. You liked playing football. You were good at it. And then you began to lose your sight. Yeah. What did you think would happen after that with your football? Did you worry that you wouldn't be able to play it again? No. No? You were determined nothing would change? Yeah. And I'm why, why, where did you find that determination? What was it you said to yourself? I want to carry on playing football and never stop. He looks to us like he has remarkable courage, but like you said, Cole, yeah. this comes completely naturally. It's not like he, he has no sense of self-pity. No. When you see on the, on the slide, it's the, it's the, de the self-determination that he has in him is just what's so inspiring. You know, the fact he's smiling all the way through. So many kids, I would imagine, would find that incredibly difficult, even at that age, to be that cheerful and that self-driven. He's got very special qualities, this boy. He does. It's so beautiful to see him, too, because, I mean, like, like you said, he's a very, very happy child. He doesn't know anything different. So, you know, you're going to have people that comment on the stuff, you know, that feel sorry for him, but that's not what we want. No. We don't want people to feel sorry mm -hmm. for him. We want people to realize that just because he's different doesn't mean that he can't do the same things because he can. Yeah. He just does them a little bit differently. You know, you're still learning with the speech and, and that's getting better all the time, but yeah. I know you're able to say a few words. How do you feel now, looking back at that moment, how do you feel today? Um... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better. You're getting better. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's amazing. And, and actually, we've got a good time to be the professor in actually, we've got to the parents, just very quickly on this. It, the, the, the effect of the speech, that is, that is what, what is that a direct effect of? Is it the incident or is it, is it sort of part of his recovery? What is, is that the cause? So, as I understand it, what, what happened on the day was that um, he was underwater and he was mm. deprived of, uh, he couldn't breathe. And when you can't breathe, what tends to happen is that the vital supply of oxygen to the brain runs out mm. because you, you take that through your breathing. Mm. Uh, and your brain needs a continuous supply, pretty much, of oxygen all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And when that runs out, um, the brain cells uh, begin, to, begin to die off. Yeah. Can you do a cartwheel? No, I can't do a cartwheel, <laughs> Harmony. I'm not as good as you. You're better than me. Now, I think we should let the viewers now see you do your backward roll and a cartwheel. Off you go. Can we show them? Let's see. Yeah. Yes. So we're just going to take, take this your microphone, microphone off. off so it doesn't interfere. You can with show me what I can't do. <laughs> backward roll first. Here we go. <laughs> so we've brought with us some equipment. This is what all children at our club use to learn these skills. And I'm going to support Harmony in the way that I Good do. Good luck, Harmony. With all our children this age. Oh, <laughs> yes. my days. Yay. There's the backward oh, flip. Oh, my see. days. Brilliant! Yay! Brilliant! Yay! Absolutely oh. brilliant. What we all want to know is, you know, if an alligator grabbed my leg, I'd be terrified. How did you manage to stay so calm to remember the trick that you'd learned? Well, um, if, I, if you want to save your life, then you have to stay calm and go for it. Like, if there's actually a fire drill, you have to stay calm and just think of what you're going to do to escape the building. It's just like a fire drill at school. You designed the colours, didn't you? Yeah. Why did you choose these colours? Because because it, they really look good and I really like yellow and purple and they look all beautiful and nice and they, bright. They do look bright, they do look beautiful and they look very futuristic as well. They look really, really cool. Can you put one of the arms on for us? Is that OK? This one. Is it quite easy to do, Charlie? Yeah. yeah I'm pretty good at it, no? There you go. And Kate, what sort of a Look difference has this made to Charlie? Uh, well, no, we wanted it like, really bright and things like that to, to make her proud, really. And, like, I wanted her to be proud that she was wearing a prosthetic and, like, yeah. So it's gone Excellent. on that easy. Look, you can, Look that. you can see you squeezing your hand together. And you got this just before Christmas, didn't you, Charlie? So how much of a difference did it make having your new arm for Christmas? 
like it made it more easier and, and helpful and helps me with stuff to help at school and at home and at other places. You go to the shop, you're coming around with your children. You're, yeah. I guess you're thinking, are you thinking in your mind at that point, well, I hope this is the thing that's going to wake him up? Is, it, is that what you're thinking? No, 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 just, no, okay. no, no. We just, uh, me and well, just... we just help him wash, like, every day with yeah. those. And, uh, uh, yeah, we just covered with nice blanket and we spray the odor and, and, like, maybe three seconds, Casper just opened the eye. Was it instantly? <gasps> yeah. It's amazing. Were you all there in the room? No, mum was, mum I ran was, out. I was there, so I just <laughs> yeah. ran out from yeah. the bedroom and made, you know, like, panic, you know, Casper waking up, Casper waking up. Oh, so. my goodness yeah. me, Casper, Casper's can I taking ask a deep you? breath yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember that moment of waking up? No. no. Still under a lot of sedation at the time. Yeah. Not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Not at all, yeah. Because you're a striker, right? Yeah. You play up front. So when you're approaching the goal, what what's going through your mind to make sure that you're on target? Well, the goalie calls out, mm -hmm. so I know where the goal is. I just run straight, so straight, and then I just shoot. See, I've been watching videos of you, Mikey, and you're yeah. better with no sight than most of the players we've had at Arsenal in the last ten years with sight. So <laughs> I'm hoping that we're going to get you in the first team. Tell us what you learned and how, at the moment when your life is under threat, where its teeth are sinking into your leg, you have the presence of mind to put your... What did you do? Put your thumbs on its nostrils? No. Um, I put the two fingers next to... I mean, I put the um, fingers in the middle in its nostrils. Wow. What did Amazing. you do before? You punched him and it didn't work, did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, let me talk to you. Goodness. I mean, your daughter's a yes, remarkable sir. young lady. You know, to have the presence of mind, first of all, to have the ability to punch an alligator that's biting her leg, and then to remember this trick to, to poke its nostrils. You must be very proud of her having that presence of mind. I'm just so glad that she was able to do that. You have no idea. You think you love your kids, but when something like this happens, it's just beyond words. Um, the story that she told that, you know, no more is uh, she went to Plan B, and they all just kind of just laughed. Uh, plan B, and they're like, Plan B, yeah, to stick my fingers in his nostrils, and he had to breathe. So we're so glad that it turned out that way. Now, do you think you can do a whole marathon? Yes. Maybe I think we you do probably London can. Too. The, maybe the London Marathon, eh? Or what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, an astronaut. An astronaut. <laughs> I love it. You'd be a brilliant astronaut. <laughs> what, and go to the moon? Yeah. Would you like that? Yeah. Could you imagine walking on the moon? Yeah. It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be huh? Amazing. Yeah. Well, you're a very brave little girl and we've loved having you on the programme, so thank you very much for coming in. And, and Hannah, I mean, you know, it looks like nothing holds Omni Rose no, back. No, and we, we just want... We want everyone to know that there is always life after meningitis, that she... Mm. We hope that she'll always have the confidence to carry on her life and have a normal life as well. With, with spina bifida, once the, once the baby's born, that's usually when the intervention starts. Yeah. And kind of, it's kind of quite late on, and yeah. a lot of the damage has been done as the, as yeah. the baby has developed yeah. in the womb. The, 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 oh, she's waking up. <laughs> oh, we are um, talking about you, Louise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the trick here is, is to get in as early as possible yeah. before a lot of that damage takes place as, as, yeah. the, as the baby develops. And that's what appears to have happened. I mean, how, yeah. how old is she now? She's 15 days. Is she displaying any signs at the moment of, of, of spina bifida? From what I would expect, no. no, her, no. Like I say, her, her legs are moving. Yeah. She can feel her legs because we can, we, do the, we can rub her side of her legs and she can... Her toes reflex and... That, so she shows that sensory feeling. Yeah. Mm. She obviously shows the, the motor side of it, being able to move them. She <sighs> wheezes and blood and poos, work fine, everything. Yeah. Was, it a, was it for you, was it a no-brainer to have this procedure or did you, did you have to sit back and think very hard about it? Because it wasn't without risk, obviously. It was, no, it wasn't. I mean, before we got offered the surgery, before there was any of that, obviously, mm. we had a lot to think about. Yeah. We're both, you know, career people. We have, we have a a family, we have a life to, to, to sort of survive with. And you were advised... And we were advised at termination, yeah. you know, the, the, these babies have no sort of quality of life no. whatsoever. So, and, that, and that's no, through no fault of that hospital's own. Like, they, they, they knew... They didn't know what the, the outcomes would be. It's been quite a year for you, Ella, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, what's been your favourite moment of the year, do you think? Um, in my year, it's just... 
everyone a part of helping a kid and thank you of Ben Shepherd and give him a round of applause. Oh, oh. give me a round of applause. <laughs> yes. You don't know Ben Shepherd enough, do you? Do you know, Ella, I never get enough applause. Thank you for <laughs> finally <laughs> letting me. You said Ella, you messaged him for his birthday as you, well, yes, didn't you? Yes, I did. We've been we very close friends that. for a couple of years, but the Pride of Britain Award, because you, Ella's going to be very modest about this, Karen, mm. uh, but she has had a number of very serious health issues and she, despite her sunny disposition, and she always brings so much sunshine to yeah. everything that she does. That must have been a very special moment for, you, for for all of you, for Ella, but for you and the family as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You don't on see or on hear things that no. have happened and that stays with you. So then to see her on that stage and like we've watched it for years and you see some amazing... I felt really proud and I felt I love to sing everybody because that's make everybody smiling Happy it does. It's called uh, neurophysics. It's it's a mixture of uh, exercise, physiotherapy, and uh, cognitive exercises. They don't actually um, do this for children because of the cognitive side of things. Mm -hmm. um, we were lucky enough to persuade them to see Node, basically to give us an assessment, mm -hmm. so we can then prepare him for the future when he's old enough to have that cognitive side to help things. So basically, it's it's the brain's ability to um, heal uh, or correct the body's nervous system. Yes. Uh, it's an extraordinary thing, it's the body, amazing. isn't it? Yeah. It's so what are those doctors that, of course, were only acting out of what they believe were the best interest for it's you course, and, and for Noah at the time? Um, what do they say now about where <laughs> he is? He's extraordinary. Yeah. And we send them emails, don't we, and pictures and update them. Yeah. Yes, we do. I, we have I, an I bet they're delighted. Well, I bet, they, I bet it's a rare case of doctors being delighted to have been wrong. Oh, they are delighted. You know? yes. to, and we take yep. them presents at Christmas and we go <laughs> yeah. and dress up and see all the other children as well, yeah. don't we? It's amazing. Yeah.